Hey everybody, Josh here. Um, I promised you all a video on the swarm traps that my dad and I built. I've used these for a couple of years now, so I kind of wanted to just run over it with you, let you know, uh, you know, the success that I've had with these, how I build them, and give you some overall tips on trying to capture your own swarm. Uh, I can't take credit for this design. I got this design off of the internet. I'm not sure exactly where I pulled it from, whether it was a, a video that I watched or some photos that I saw. I honestly can't remember, but I modified it a little bit and I'll, I'll talk you through the modifications that I made to this. Um, but for those of you that don't know, um, swarming is uh, honeybees way of multiplying. And so what a swarm is, is <clears throat> every, every honeybee colony is programmed to try to swarm. A swarm is where uh, the colony grows to a certain point in size, gets enough bees, enough brood, to the point that they're ready to split themselves in two. And the way that they do this is um, there's, a, there's a sort of a pheromone that's released, I believe it's pheromone, um, that kind of triggers the urge uh, for the bees to, um, to swarm. And I think it's actually based on the amount of brood that's in the hive. The more the brood, the more the uh, sense of urgency to swarm. Uh, and what they do is the, the queen that's in the hive uh, will take approximately 50% of the bees and they will leave the hive. So in the, in the bee world, it's, it's kind of opposite of the human world where typically the kids leave the nest and the parent stays behind. Uh, in the honeybee world, the mom stays behind, the mom leaves and the kids stay behind. So a queen bee will leave with approximately 50% of the bees and she will do that uh, once there is enough remaining brood and bees to sustain the existing colony. Uh, the existing colony will have likely have several uh, what's called um, swarm cells in it. And these are uh, peanut looking queen cups. Typically, they're capped at the point where the uh, queen is swarming and leaving with half the number of bees. Um, there can be anywhere from one queen cup to numerous. Those queens um, will eventually emerge. There's a lot of evidence that shows that the, the first virgin queen that hatches uh, will go around and use her stinger to kill other virgin queens, but that's not always the case. Uh, there's plenty of times that multiple virgins hatch within the hive. Now, sometimes you, and I'm going to try not to get on too much of a tangent here, but sometimes if you open up a hive and there's a virgin in there, you can hear her called piping. And that's where she uses her wings and she makes like a piping noise. And essentially she's ready to throw down with other virgin queens that may be in the colony. She's essentially calling them out to fight. Um, it's kind of like Highlander where there can only be one. Uh, so if the virgin queens end up fighting and the strongest one survives or the first virgin queen hatches and kills the other virgins that have not hatched yet, um, she now has the colony, and it's up to her to go ahead and go on her mating flights and to mate with drones and then hopefully come back successfully and begin laying in the existing colony, and that's how that existing colony is able to continue. Meanwhile, the primary queen, the queen that was in there, and half the bees that left uh, will typically fly off to an intermediate location. And what I mean by that is it could be um, somewhere on another hive, you know, you've seen pictures where like, you'll see a whole bunch of bees on, on the side of a hive. Um, they may end up in the grass somewhere, or what's more likely is she finds a tree limb and she will go and fly to a tree limb that's nearby. And all of the bees that left with her know, know and will follow where she is and they will all cluster together. So if you've seen photos of a swarm where you know, people may call me and say, Josh, I have a cluster of bees on my tree. That's what that is. That's a, that's a swarm that left within the past, typically past few days. Now, if it's a brand new swarm, meaning it just left a few minutes ago, they will stay there anywhere from, you know, a few minutes to a few days. Uh, meanwhile, the scout bees that are in that swarm will go out and look for another suitable home, come back in, get on the cluster of bees, do the waggle dance, and try to communicate to all the other bees and the queen there, I found a good home over here, we should all fly over there. That's <clears throat> essentially what a swarm is um, at the 10,000 foot level. We could really get into the weeds on, on swarming behavior and how to suppress swarming and all that, but that's for another video. So 
what is a swarm trap? Well, a swarm trap is where you are essentially putting out bait to try to lure that big ball of bees instead of going to a tree limb or after it goes to a tree limb, the scout bees come in, in here and say, oh man, this is a great home. We should go in here. Now, a lot of beekeepers will put swarm traps near their apiary in the hopes that they um, can capture their own swarms because as beekeepers, we don't like to lose our bees. Um, we're trying to capture bees a lot of times and increase our apiary. Um, so we'll put swarm traps near our apiary, but we may put it somewhere else. As far as uh, location of swarm traps, um, it varies. I'm heavily wooded here. Uh, so I typically put my swarm traps on the edge of the woods. Um, seems to be a natural place that honeybees like to try to find hollowed out trees and will swarm into. Uh, my neighbor frequently gets swarms around her house. So she has asked me uh, to use one of my swarm traps and we hung it near uh, in a tree near her house and uh, got a swarm in it last year. Th these swarm traps, I've had quite a bit of success with these. I think I've had three or four traps swarms um successfully trapped in the past just two years since we made these i think a couple years ago so um this particular uh swarm trap is made out of osb and pine and that's just what my dad and i had on hand so you can make it out of any material scrap wood that you have laying around um i'll go ahead and grab the camera and bring you in here in a second but I kind of wanted to talk about uh, what I put inside the hive. So on the front is just a, a one inch hole, a one inch entrance. You'll see, you know, some beekeepers will put the entrance off to the side. I really don't think it matters. I haven't really seen where it matters. I use these discs on my supers and this just allows me to either close up the bees, allow ventilation only. Like if I'm going to pull this trap down and I don't want the bees coming out, um, I'll go ahead and just put this on ventilation only or just close it off. And then, of course, um, when, you're, when you're putting the trap out trying to capture a swarm, you leave it open. This lid uh, just comes off the top real easy. The back is a 2 by 4 um, which allows you to either hang it from somewhere or what I typically use is a ratchet strap. Well, I'll strap this to a tree 15 to 20 feet up in the air. And then within the box uh, is five frames. And so these frames consist, if you, if you have uh, partially drawn frames, that's good. Uh, if you have starter strips, that's even better. And I'll explain why you don't want to put fully drawn frames out in here in a minute. So I've got four frames that are essentially kind of like starter strips. I need to put another smaller strip in this one. I just haven't done it yet. And then I have the fifth frame, the one, the one frame of sort of old, stinky, brood comb okay you can tell it had brood in here because of how dark it is and the stinkier and kind of the dirtier now that doesn't mean wax moth damage or hive beetle damage or anything like that i'm just talking old drawn comb kind of the older and the stinkier the better bees love that stuff you know humans typically like a clean home it seems like the bees like it you know stinkier and dirtier i don't know why uh, but the inside of this is just hollow so again it's just kind of three quarter inch uh, OSB and pine all the way around. And then I have a lip here so that the frame sit on it. And again, I'll, br I'll bring you in here in a minute. But when a scout bee um, is looking for a new place that's suitable to hive a swarm, there needs to be enough bee space in there because the bees are going to need to draw comb. Uh, just like, you know, in a, in a normal Langstroth hive, they have to have room in there to have comb in it. So this, this dimension isn't like the gold standard or anything, but there needs to be enough room in here to kind of mimic what they would do in nature, which would be like the hollowing out of a tree. The reason why you don't want to put five fully drawn frames or five frames of foundation in here is because there's not enough space. So that, that scout bee comes in here, and the first thing that she does is she flies around in here, and she is assessing how much potential space is in this possible home for the swarm to go into. And if it's completely crowded with, you know, five frames of, of drawn of drawn comb in here and there's no space, that scout bee is going to move on to somewhere else. It's not going to be suitable. So what you want to end up doing is putting mostly empty frames with just tiny starter strips. So let me grab the camera and I'll bring you over here so you can uh, take a closer look.
OK. So here's what it looks like down inside. And what I typically do is when I'm baiting this is I will put the drawn frame, the, 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 the frame that has all the sort of old stinky comb on it, I put it up against the very back. So when a bee comes in that entrance down there and she starts flying around in here, there's going to be plenty of space because these other frames that I put in there are mostly empty and they just have that starter strip on the top. So a bee, scout bees will come in here and they will measure by flying around how much space is inside there and there's plenty of space in, in the front towards the back. This just acts as a lure. Because if scout bees come in here and they find old comb in there, they know or they think, well, gee, there, there was a colony of bees in here at one point, and they sure thought it was a good home. So why not us? And then this lid uh, just fits uh, real nicely on top. And you can push it down, just kind of sits. Just the weight of it is good enough. Uh, and then the modification that I made, because when I first hung these traps, um, a, a huge colony swarmed and was clustering all over the front here. There were plenty of bees inside. The queen was inside, but they were bearding like crazy. And I may end up using that uh, as my uh, thumbnail uh, for, the, for this video. So you'll get, you'll get a nice look at it. But um, they were too hot. They were too stinking hot in here. And there was no ventilation. This was all enclosed. This lid was completely sealing it shut. And so what I decided to do was drill two-inch holes on the side um, using those Forrester bits. And then I have number eight hardwire cloth because I don't want this to be another entrance and exit uh, for the bees. So I don't want the bees to be able to get in and out, but I wanted the heat in the hive to be able to be able to escape. And it worked great last year. So last year, the swarm uh, that I got in one of these boxes over at my neighbor's house, all the bees were inside. And, and, and it, it, every single frame was covered in bees and it wasn't too hot there was enough uh, heat that was able to escape here. So they weren't bearding on the front. Um, so let's talk about uh, lures. So I already told you that the uh, uh, comb here was an excellent lure. But the other thing is this uh, swarm commander. And this is good stuff. This is, uh, it's got essential oils in it. I think it's got lemongrass, but it also has queen pheromone in it. Uh, I don't know exactly which one. You can go on their website, and I'm sure that they'll tell you all about it. Um, it's a product of the Blywood Bee Company. But a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. And what I mean by that is literally two sprays once a week. So what you want to do is you want to spray the inside of the lid once. And then I spray inside the hole, the entrance, once, and that's it. And I'm telling you guys, this stuff is so strong. You Sometimes I can just stand by and within five minutes, there's scout bees that's already checking it out. I'm not kidding you. So it's, it's really good stuff. It's really expensive stuff. So one bottle of this is $35 on Amazon. Now, the good news is, is that a little bit of this goes a very, very long way. So I've had this for two years now, and I think the bottle's only down to here. So, and again, I've, I've caught four or five swarms uh, using this as a lure. It's really good stuff. It's worth the money when you think about how much a, uh, a package or a, a nuke of bees costs. You know, this is only, you know, what, $35, something like that. So I'll put a link to this uh, in the description, and I'll put a link uh, to these, uh, these discs that I use if you want to do something similar. Uh, to be able to close them up or or open it, I just find them. I find it very useful. Um, now, lessons learned. The one thing, if I was to build this again, and again, you you can easily build these your own. This this, this is not this is not difficult. You got a two by four here with a hole so that you can hang it or strap it around a tree. Uh, you've got a couple support pieces right here, and then you've just got this this OSB uh, and this pine on the side. Super simple. On the inside here, you just make sure that you, you have a lip for your frames, just like on a standard Langstroth. So you make sure that you have a lip here that your frames can sit on, and it really doesn't take a lot of time. I don't know how much swarm traps are on Amazon. Um, I can't vouch for them either. I don't know how effective they are, uh, but um, you know, you may end up paying 60, 70 bucks, and you can make one of these yourself with scrap wood fairly, fairly cheap. Now, Lessons learned. The one thing that I would not do again. 
I would not use uh, OSB on uh, on the inside. Um, and the reason why, so here I told you to use OSB, but I probably would not. And the reason why, if you have it laying around and you want to use it, fine. But I would almost coat it with some sort of, uh, um, a, I don't know, an, a, something, so, something to smooth it out. Because what I find is when I get a swarm in here and I've got thousands of bees, they can cling to this like there's no tomorrow. And it is really hard to shake all the bees out when they're stuck and clinging to this OSB because the smooth surface on this pine, they can't really cling to it. But this OSB, they can hang on for dear life and they do. And so I'm sitting there smoking and I'm shaking and I'm smoking and I'm shaking. Meanwhile, I'm disrupting the poor little bees and their, and their stomachs. I'm probably not doing uh, you know very good service. And if the queen's in there, hopefully she's on the frame and I just went ahead and set the frames in. But I'm talking all the bees that are left after you remove all these frames out there's usually a thousand bees sticking to the to the sides here. So if I were to give you some advice and learn from my mistake, don't use OSB uh, if you can avoid it. If you have to use it, put some sort of coating. I don't know if that means painting it or or what. There's all sorts of material maybe that you could that uh, some sort of polyurethane. I don't know. I'd have to research it. But to make this smooth so that the bees can't cling to it. Uh, is probably a good idea. Um, at least that's the one lesson learned. The other thing is just, uh, which which obviously I remedied myself with this, make sure that there's adequate ventilation. And if you have some fr some starter strip frames that actually have some some comb that bees have already started to draw out, even better. I mean, a bee's going to come in here and be like, you know, hot damn. Uh, this, obviously, a colony thought this was a great home at one point. I've struck gold here. It's vacant. There's no bees in here. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the colony and tell the swarm, you know, I found us a new home. So, <clears throat> so that's really it. Uh, I really like these. It's a simple design. It's not hard to make. It's relatively cheap. It's a lot cheaper than you can buy one on Amazon. That's for sure. Um, and that this, uh, uh, swarm commander, I highly recommend, even though it's expensive as hell, it's still worth the, it's still worth the price if you can, you know, catch a handful. I mean, my God, I've only used like a fifth of that. I may end up catching 10 or 15 or 20 swarms in one bottle. I mean, that's certainly worth it in terms of what you paid and what you're getting from all the freebies. Um, so anyway, that's it. This, this is a quick video on the, on the swarm trap that I've been promising you guys for months. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next video. Checking on this swarm trap that I hung yesterday and it's already getting a ton of activity. And interestingly enough, it uh, doesn't appear to be coming from my apiary, which is close by, but that's not the direction the bees are flying from. They're, they're taking off that way, and my apiary is right there. So um, these scout bees appear to be from somewhere else. Quite a bit of activity though for one day. So they're definitely in there measuring, scouting, flying around, checking the available space. I've just been staying here watching for a little bit. been quite a few quite a few in there now actually so I'm gonna go ahead and, and guess that this trap will probably have a swarm in it within three days would be my guess and of course I'll be sure to keep everyone posted but this just goes to show you I mean these things are effective uh, and even if it is one of my hives that ends up swarming, and again, I've been through every hive and I've still yet to see um, queen cups, swarm cells. But even, let's say, I don't know, but there is one hive that's swarming. If you capture your own swarms, that's a good thing. Any beekeeper will take that. And I've got another swarm trap hung up over at my neighbor's house. Uh, and I'm gonna check on that one here in a little bit, but these things work. Uh, and you can get free bees or you can effectively keep half of your bees. 
so they work. Um, anyway, some good activity here. I'll keep everybody posted.